And did you ask, is he back? <laughs> oh, come on! What's going on world? Sam Hose, better known as the Soul Maniac. Here to give you an inside look of the new Air Jordan Chicago 10. And as always, Soul Quest is here to give you the history behind the kit. It was 1995 in two simple words. I'm back. Mike had returned to the NBA after taking a year off to honor the death of his father and play baseball. Nike thought Mike wouldn't return and had started retroing some of his first kicks, such as the Air Jordan 1 and Air Jordan 2. But when he did return, he was rocking the infamous 45. The tens released in a city series where various players wore them in Mike's honor. You had the Sacramento colorway worn by Mitch Richmond. You had the Seattle colorway worn by Kendall Gill. The Orlando colorway worn by Nick Anderson. The New York colorway worn by Hubert Davis. The Charlotte colorway worn by Jerry Stackhouse, who played for UNC at the time, and of course the Chicago 10 colorway worn by Mike, Scotty, and Harold Miner, who played for the Miami Heat. But the 10s wouldn't just be known for Mike coming back to the lead and the shooter he played in. They would get the comeback name for another reason. When he returned, Mike only was able to play in 17 games, but he still averaged 26 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists. And in April, he even led the Bulls to a 9-1 record. But it was March 29th when the 10s would truly get their name. Dubbed this a double nickel game, Mike was going up against Pat Riley's New York Knicks in Madison Square Garden, where they held the NBA's number one ranked defense. The only player to score 40 or more points that year against them was Shaq. <laughs> and coming off of retirement and not playing for a while, Shooting 21-37 from the field, Michael scored a cool 55 points and made the game win an assist. Now that I told you a little bit about the 10, the history, I'm going to let you check out the highlights for yourself. Thanks. In 1995, Jordan's comeback became the season's marquee attraction in New York as the Bulls paid a visit to the Knicks. It's the magical, mystical Jordan Road Tour. 1995. Back to New York City. He loves playing in this gym. To his premature retirement, nobody guarded Michael Jordan straight up better than John Starks. He would use not only one, but both hands to check him on the perimeter and to push and shove him in the paint. The rules are a little different now. However, Starks told me moments ago, the Knicks still plan to have him go one-on-one. -on -one. No double teaming. He wasn't intimidated before, and he's not now, and he says he's eager for the challenge. I had him at my disposal in a sense. They're going to keep going to the well with Jordan and Starks. My, oh my. It was like Starks wasn't even. As the jump shot falling here tonight. That first quarter, I knew we had something more. When I started hitting all the jumps. Making one shot after another. Michael Jordan with 49 points as his third quarter winds down. Off the crown. Puts the move on Starks. Yes! In just the fifth game of his comeback, he was already looking like the Jordan of old. And here's the post up by Jordan. Off the spin! Would he have made that look any easier? Michael was clearly enjoying his command performance. Michael Jordan with 51 points. That's the record of the most points scored against the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. 53 points for Michael Jordan. He has to, you know, to, to score. And, you know, I was going to make him stop. Jordan, working on the start. Got him in the air. Michael Jordan has 55. He had to work for the... Calling me shoot at every time. I can't pass. Michael had always possessed a keen sense of drama. And in this, his return to center stage, he gave the audience a surprise ending. 